buy me? Charlotte, but there are worse fates than marrying the King of England. Cleopatra, I would die for Egypt. What would you die for? Hello, and thanks for joining us. From a controversial docudrama on Cleopatra to Barack Obama's series on jobs in America, welcome to Encore's monthly roundup of all that's new in television. And I'm joined by TV critic Deep Ticker Laurent, starting with Queen Charlotte, a new prequel miniseries from the Bridgerton universe on Netflix. That's right. It's the latest show from the Bridgerverse, as they call it, Eve. Unlike the two previous seasons, uh, series, uh, seasons of Bridgerton, this prequel is not at all based on Julia Quinn's books. Queen Charlotte is a fictionalized look at, at the rise of this young black woman who's sold off uh, to marry the King of England, King George, uh, produce an heir and renew racial ties in society. It traces uh, what was a rather loving uh, but rocky marriage with the reclusive King George, who we learn suffers from what they called at the time mania, which is kind of similar to bipolarism. The show also sort of crisscrosses between past and present, where we find Queen Charlotte desperately trying to convince her children to get married and, and produce an heir to continue the royal line. Well, it is quite fun. Um, let's take a look at Queen Charlotte. In the Bridgerton world, we're always talking about how Queen Charlotte and King George sort of made this new England possible, where we're seeing integrated society and everybody's got titles. And so I wanted to show how that came to be. Also, in this, I do not mix, ever. Well, the Great Experiment is a topic that is exploring race and classes merging. It is time we were united as a society, is it not? It's the idea of the first time the ton is desegregated. I'm the most royal person I've ever known. It is you and me, together. Love can bloom from the thorniest of gardens. <laughs> your flower metaphors make me nauseated with their sweetness, but I applaud your point. Well, it certainly is very steamy. What were your thoughts? Well, it has a lot of what we saw in Bridgerton, you know, like an impossibly gorgeous cast, as usual. Great chemistry, like you said, lots of steamy scenes between the leads, India Amarte Fio and Co Corey Milkreis, who play uh, Queen Charlotte and King George, respectively. And you know what? What Shonda Rhimes does so well, the creator of Bridgerton, is seamlessly integrate these characters of diversity without it being a big deal, without it being a big statement. And that's why this franchise is so successful. Um, unlike Bridgerton, though, this story gets quite intense. It gets quite sad in the second half as it deals with King George's illness. Um, I, I also, one thing I love were the wonderful explorations of female friendship because there's a subplot in this, which is a friendship developed between Queen Charlotte and uh, her close friend Lady Danbury and their rise of these two black women in Brit British society. Good six-episode format, too. It's a bit slow-moving, but it's great for those who have a Bridgerton-shaped void in their hearts waiting for season three to drop. Okay. Well, from Queen Charlotte to the last Queen of Egypt, Cleopatra, she's the focus of a new Netflix docu-series from Jada Pinkett Smith, which sparked great controversy before its release. That's right, a lot of controversy. This docudrama, uh, Queen Cleopatra, traces the life and loves of Egypt's beloved queen of the Ptolemaic Kingdom of Egypt, who ruled from 51 to, 30, uh, 51 to 31 BC. The series intersperses historical reenactment with experts comments, sort of documentary style comments, uh, but it's a portrayal of Queen Cleopatra whose origins we don't really know as a black queen played by actress Adele James that sparked outrage in Egypt. Okay, well, before we delve into that controversy, let's take a peek at Queen Cleopatra out on Netflix. Cleopatra was trying to save the country that she loved from destruction did what I had to do to protect what is mine. This is some woman exercising power. Cleopatra was a Ptolemaic ruler. The very first Ptolemy is a general of Alexander the Great. It's possible that she was an Egyptian. I imagine her to have curly hair like me and a similar skin color. I remember my grandmother saying to me, I don't care what they tell you in school, Cleopatra was black. 
Tell us more about the controversy then. Well, in a nutshell, it's, it's race. Um, the Egyptian Ministry for Antiquity, so that's a state ministry, put out a statement saying that Queen Cleopatra was Hellenic and light-skinned. They call the portrayal of uh, Cleopatra as black a, a, quote, falsification of Egyptian history and a blatant historical misconception. Now, in uh, retal in return, uh, Cleopatra's director, Tina Garavi, defended the show. She wrote an article for Var Variety magazine saying her choice was to bring Cleopatra into the 21st century. She also added quite audaciously, perhaps it's not just that I've directed a series that portrays Cleopatra as, as black, but that I've asked Egyptians to see themselves as Africans, and they are furious at me for that. Um, in any case, Egypt's documentary channel has already announced that it'll be producing a documentary about what it says is the true history of Cleopatra. So should we watch this series? Well, for sure. It's super informative. It's very interesting. Um, it's, it's a short series as well, just four episodes, in which you do learn a lot about Cleopatra. The experts who provide the commentary, they're very... Um, entertaining, they're very eloquent, there's good scene setting. I did find the dramatic reenactments a bit over the top and sometimes anachronistic and in my personal opinion, some of the acting in there was not great. Um, but And ultimately, I think the problem is the series tries to be a documentary and a drama. It might have just been better as a sort of sexy, soapy reimagining of a black queen, uh, Cleopatra. Okay, well, I'll check it out. Um, well, from Queens to Presidents, White House Plumbers is a new dark comedy on HBO that takes us back to the Watergate scandal in the 1970s. Tell us more. Well, in 1971, Daniel Ellsberg leaked the Pentagon Papers, revealing that the government had lied for de decades to the public about its involvement in the Vietnam War. Uh, Richard Nixon, then president, he hired uh, former CIA agent E. Howard Hunt, played by Wo Woody Harrelson in this series, and former FBI agent Gordon Liddy, played by Justin Theroux. The two were basically tasked with stopping these leaks, hence why they're called White House plumbers, uh, and, uh, and ensure that Richard Nixon could get re-elected. Now, while uh, trying to break into the Democratic National Committee offices in 1972, they got caught. And this is really the tip of the iceberg of the Watergate scandal that involved corruption, fraud, abuse of power, eventually leading to Nixon's downfall. Uh, so White House plumbers is from the perspective of these two men. Take a look. I really hope you understand the scope and scale of this thing. <laughs> you tell those spineless, two-faced politicians loyalty is a two-way street. Did you just use the fun family outing to cover up some spy shit? We're not a bunch of fools. Why are you shredding money? We're patriots acting in the country's best interest. Ah, what about the best interest of your family? <laughs> It certainly looks like a fun, deep dive into 1970s and American politics. What's the reaction been like to it? It's actually been pretty good, Eve. Uh, White House Plumbers is from David Mandel, who is the showrunner of the Emmy Award-winning political comedy Veep, and he brings a similar comedic farce to this series based on the book by Agel Krog, who was a former close aide of Richard Nixon. Uh, and what I loved was even the series disclaimer was quite hilarious. They said that no names were changed for the show because pretty much everyone involved was guilty anyway. Um, Harrelson and Theroux's uh, they play these former spies. Now, take a look uh, at what they had to say about their characters. So cool to see it from the burglar's perspective, you know? Like, I don't know why that hadn't been done before, you know? That, that just feels like a natural and a, and a definitely more interesting vantage point. There is a, something wonderful and funny about playing overconfidence and stupidity at the same time. Um, <laughs> and hopefully that translates. That's Although they were both extremely bright men, I, I don't want to make them sound stupid. Um, they, I mean, in a sense, you go, they were so bright, how could they not have seen? But I think they were also, you know, two people who were in the grips of fear. Like, I think they feared, I think they genuinely feared communism. Now, you see from just that excerpt of that interview that they have great chemistry, uh, the, the two actors, and that really translates onto the screen. Eve, I felt, though, Woody Harrelson is so charismatic, but I felt at times it didn't really translate uh, on screen. You're kind of waiting for him to sort of up the natural charisma. Uh, Justin Theroux, though, was really, really funny and almost cartoonish uh, in his character. A great supporting cast, too. There's uh, Lena Headley from uh, Game of Thrones. Uh, I think, ultimately, if you like Veep's sort of sarcastic, farcical style, you'll also love White House Plumbers.
point. Well, finally, um, former US President Barack Obama narrates a new Netflix docu-series that examines the world of work in the US. Yeah, quite a different president-related <laughs> series. Barack Obama and uh, he and Michelle Obama are actually executive producers on this series that looks at what work means for the common American in the industries of home care, tech and hospitality. It asks questions like, what brings you joy and, uh, in work? What gives you purpose? What makes a good job good? Uh, and, you know, these themes are uni universal enough to appeal to us all, especially particularly pertinent in a post-pandemic world, you know, the era of quiet quitting, reflecting on what we really want out of life, uh, trying to figure out if AI is going to take our job or not. Um, this series is actually part of Obama's 20, of the Obama's 2018 deal with Netflix. We don't know how much that deal is worth. Um, and, you know, just watching a bit of it, it's such a lovely reminder of how charismatic Barack Obama is uh, and how good he is on TV and how personable he is in his interactions with everyday uh, Americans. There's some irony there then um, that such a show is released at a time when some are calling the Hollywood writers strike a Netflix strike. That's right, Eve. Thousands of TV and film writers have taken to the picket lines to protest poor working conditions and stagnated wages, despite uh, the wild popularity of TV and film content on streaming platforms like Netflix. Um, you know, in any case, Netflix must be feeling the heat because it has abruptly cancelled uh, major events uh, with its advertisers and its CEO, Ted Sarandos, has also cancelled a major appearance at a literary event for fear that uh, protests, uh, the writer strikes protests could overshadow these events. Dipti, thank you so much for all of that. We're going to leave you with a sneak peek at Working What We Do All Day, the Obama's doco series out on Netflix this month. Thanks for watching. See you next time. What if the life you dream of didn't seem so distant? It would be nice if you got at least minimum wage. I went bankrupt. The union affords people to be able to live. We have it all. What responsibility do you have to other people? What comes from people should go back to people multiple times over. I got a jam coming. I can hear it. <laughs> they don't believe in working a nine to five like we've done. Money is not a motive. But you need it. <laughs> I'm working nine more years and I'm done. What about your wife? <laughs> oh, you'll be working there forever. Forget about it. <laughs>